welcome to the Church Brand Guide podcast. My name is Michael Prasad, and this is a place where I want to help you cut through the noise as a church so that you get to see more people showing up, more people having their lives transformed as a result of that, and also more people choosing to contribute to the vision of your church. In today's episode, we're going to be tackling the difference between branding and marketing. This is an important idea to get straight. Like what are each of these these tools that we can use as a church to then reach more people because we understand how they work. So we're going to unpack three big ideas behind why marketing and branding are different. And also I have a special guest. Uh, His name is Joshua Riggs and I'm going to introduce him a little bit later on, but he uh, brings some great clarity behind the rebranding of his church and how he was able to do that well. Um, So let me just uh, start by unpacking the difference between branding and marketing. First of all, branding is about knowing who you are. It's taking time to understand who you are as a church and who it is that you're really good at serving. Again, from a spiritual perspective, I've said it in in previous episodes, but I always want to bring it back up. On, On a spiritual perspective, anybody that is breathing is welcome to come to our church. I'm sure you would, you would agree with that. Uh, we hope the best for them and want, you know, everything that God has for them. But from a branding perspective, it's extremely important that we have a focus. Uh, who are we really good at reaching? And, uh, in previous episodes I've unpacked this idea of a target audience. So love for you to check that out. But um, the other thing about branding is that how do we how do we do that? We're taking time to clarify how do we reach them? How, how what's our messaging look like? What do our colors and our fonts look like? How do we say things? Um, all those are part of our branding. Ultimately, we're shaping a perception of who we are. We can't really tell people what to think about us. So all we can do is be intentional to present ourselves in a way where they say that we are what we hope they say we are. Hopefully hopefully that makes sense. I know that's a little bit of a tongue twister there for for a uh, few listening, but the idea is um, the perception that they have is our brand. And we just need to be intentional to make sure their perception is what it needs to be. So marketing, the difference with uh, marketing is that the, the marketing is really the experience that we provide. So every there's a lot of different things that can be considered marketing. Um, your online digital experience, like your website, your Facebook, and you know if you're on Instagram, all those, it's part of your marketing. Also, it's the in-person experience that people have. So your parking lot, the lobby, like all of that is part of your marketing. Uh, the way you are greeted by people is part of your marketing. Um, all that is so the experience, whatever um, experience people have, they get a postcard mailer in the mail. Uh, you know, it came to their house before Easter. That's part of your marketing, right? So we, we kind of know that that is marketing. But um, it's also the, the greeter the greeter at the door. Like that's part of your marketing too. So marketing is just anything that people experience as part of your church, uh, whether it's online or offline, that's that's your marketing. So we need these two things to work together. And we have to, we have to understand how they work so that we can make them work together really well. A lot of times in church world, I see... Uh, church is focusing a lot on marketing, like really getting their messaging out there, promoting things. Um, but I want to share with you three big ideas when it comes to marketing that we need to be um, uh, careful of. And I have three three questions really to, to present to you when it comes to, to marketing. Um, the first question is, uh, is it worthy? So is, is your marketing worthy? Um, so what I mean by that is uh, when you promote the church, and people show up, is it something that they, sh- they, they should experience? <laughs> um, so sometimes we promote things and they're not really that great. Uh, so what, what we do is we end up pushing people away instead of drawing people towards the church. So if something's not really great and we're trying to promote it, then um, we should pause and ask ourselves, should we really be promoting this, this thing? Uh, just as an example, if you're promoting a great uh, youth ministry where teenagers are hanging out and having a great time, and then uh, people show up with their teenagers and there's crickets, like it's just a room where p- the kids are hanging out and there's one old, you know, Wii game station that they're they're trying to share um, and it's not great. Like 
then you probably shouldn't be marketing the, the youth ministry if it's not worthy of being marketing mar marketed. Um, so it, that's, that's one big question. The, the second big question when it comes to marketing is, uh, is it authentic? Is it authentic? So is your marketing really representing who you are? A uh, great way to do this is actually using photos from the church to, to then market your events. That way it's very authentic. It's real people. It's real environments. Um, a, lot, a lot of times in church world, I see people using stock photography and it's not representing really who they are. They might use a great stock photo of a, I don't know, a hotel lobby with glass and metal, very modern and trendy. Uh, and then when people show up at the church, there's old wood paneling from the 70s, you know, that are, that's all over the, the lobby. That's not authentic. And people will, it'll break people's trust. Uh, it might look good on the promotional flyer, but when they show up, it's not really who you are. So make sure you look good. It kind of goes back to the first question about is it worthy? Um, make sure your church looks good, presents well, maybe make some changes in, internally. Uh, that's where the branding piece comes in, really is uh, making sure the brand is authentic and real, uh, that you're making those changes that are necessary. So then when you do promote whatever it is you're going to promote, it is worthy. It is authentic to what people will experience. Uh, the third question is, is it simple and clear? So is your marketing simple and clear? So a lot of times in church world, we'll have a lot of different messages that are going out there. I, I experienced this when I first started off, I was uh, working at a mega church. We had a lot of different ministries in the church, uh, probably like 19 different ministries. It was a very large church, everything from prison ministries to bicycling ministry to, uh, of course, kids, preschool or youth, middle school. Uh, young adults, uh, all the different types of men's, women's, uh, all the different types of ministries that you could possibly think of. This this church had it. And I remember just uh, very happily just creating promotions for all these different things that are going on. And there, was, there wasn't like a consistency to it. So I would just design something that looked great for this ministry and something different that looked great for that ministry. Uh, and I would walk through the lobby and I would look around and I, it was just a lot of noise, a lot of visual noise happening. Uh, flyers everywhere, banners everywhere, posters everywhere, um, all these different graphics on the screens and nothing looked like it belonged together. Uh, so the, it was just a lot of noise. Uh, it almost looked like if you were at a NASCAR, you know, track and you're just seeing all these different brands all over the place, all, different messaging, different fonts. And it's very, very confusing. So when we confuse people, we lose people and we have to be simple so that we are able to build trust in people so they understand us quickly. When people understand us quickly, that's what they'll buy into. And we want to make sure that we're trying to be as simple as possible. So when we go through the branding process, what we do is we simplify. We create a overarching message that we're trying to communicate as a church and a strategy that we're trying to communicate as a church. You've probably experienced it before. If you've been in church world for a while, you know, the church might have an overall vision and then maybe one of the ministries in the church or several of the ministries has like something different that they're trying to do. Maybe your church is all about local outreach, reaching this city, but then like your young adults ministry is all about global outreach and they're trying to reach the world. Well, there's a disconnect there. What if we could all be in alignment? We could figure out what that is and then communicate that and act in alignment with that. That's how we really get further faster by, by doing that. And that's why I'm such a, uh, an advocate for this branding process. And I love to take churches through it because uh, it just creates so much clarity and we're able to see much more results uh, because of the clarity that we create through the branding process. So uh, I typically take people through a discovery phase and then out of that discovery, there's, there's basically two sessions. And then from there, we design a logo, the website, some signage, whatever else is needed visually to then represent the the church, but it starts by really going through who we are and discovering that and being very simple about it. Uh, today, I have a guest on. His name is Joshua Riggs. Uh, he is a uh, worship pastor, communications director, um, and he's uh, been on staff at a church for almost about 10 years, uh, Beth, uh, Bethel Church. And he's uh, going to share with us how he was able to rebrand his church from the inside. So it's a great story. If you're, if you're, on staff at a church and um, 
you, you see some issues kind of happening with the way that you're communicating and promoting things. Uh, Joshua saw that and he has this great story of how he was able to uh, lead upward to help the, the church leadership uh, create a brand. And he led this process. He actually went through the process with the church and then created a lot of the elements, the design elements to bring unity uh, in, into the church and, and uh, bring alignment into the church. So he's going to share about that. He also has a great resource um, that he's going to share with you that he, he's developing and constantly pouring into. So he's going to share a little bit more about his resource too for churches. Uh, but Joshua is going to be our guest today. Hey, listen, if you would love to go through this branding process and you need somebody from the outside, I, I kind of find it uh, easier to work with churches as an outsider coming in uh, because I can bring fresh perspective. So what Joshua did from the inside is amazing. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited for you to hear that. But if you do need somebody from the outside, I'd love for you to give me a shout and here's some information about how you can do that. Most people don't understand why they need your church. They're driving by every weekend and they have no idea that you can help them become the hero of their story. Maybe you're a church where you see a lot of visitors coming, but they don't stick around. They leave through the back door and they don't come back. That's why I'm passionate about helping churches to brand themselves because it's where we get to communicate very clearly who we are so people can understand us quickly. When they understand us quickly, that's when they decide to buy in. This is a three-step process. The first step is to have a brand strategy in place that's right for your church and out of that create a logo that represents your story. The second step is to create a website that serves as a digital platform to welcome new guests. The third thing you have to do is make sure your lobby experience is great. It's welcoming and it helps people understand your church quickly because they're going to make a decision whether or not they're going to come back within the first five minutes, which is way before they hear the sermon. These three areas are the foundation of a good church brand, which sets a church up for growth. Here's the problem. You're not a branding expert. You didn't get a degree in branding, but people do judge a book by its cover. And I want to be your guide. I want to help you get this right. You should be able to focus on the ministry that God has called you to. And I want to help you to get the rest of it in place. Go to churchbrandguide.com and schedule a free 30 minute call with me so I can learn about your church. From there, we can decide if I can help you build your church's brand. All right, I'm hanging out today with Joshua Riggs. And Joshua uh, and I got to know each other not too long ago. Uh, it's been uh, probably less than a year, but we connected and it's been a great uh, few months of just getting to know him a little bit better. So Joshua, will you just take a moment to introduce yourself to our audience? Sure. So yeah, I'm Joshua Riggs. I am a worship pastor. I've been in ministry for 17 years years, almost 18 years now. Um, married to Allison. Uh, we've been married for also 17, almost 18 years. And she and I have five children together. We have four biological children and we have, we fostered and adopted a little girl. So uh, they're between the ages of two and 15. Wow. I didn't know that. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's quite a, it's quite a few. We stay busy. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm the worship pastor at Bethany Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, which is just south of Tulsa. I also am responsible for all the communications. So website, graphics, social media, all that. I handle all of those as well. And then kind of on the side, I am the creator of worshipresources.church, which is a website and YouTube channel to help uh, resource churches with the best and sometimes uh, cheapest <laughs> uh, resources for media and communications, graphics, uh, videos, and things like that. That is awesome, man. You are a busy guy. That yep. is awesome that you're doing that. You're also doing stuff to help advance the, the kingdom. So that's one of the things we connected on uh, not too long ago. And I was getting to know you and some of your resources as well. So uh, you, um, you're on, on staff at Bethany and you, you served there as a worship pastor, and you said also the uh, kind of the creative person. Communications I think, director, I kind of termed it. Mm -hmm. I gave myself the name, so. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's great. Oh, just, just go ahead and put something on your business card. That's great. Right, right. 
<laughs> so um, you not too long ago went through a branding process for the church, right? Why don't you, why don't you explain some of that? Where did that come from and how did that work out for you? Yeah. So I, before I, before I answer that question, before I forget, I wanted to make sure to say thank you to you for the resources that you provide. So part of what I do at Worship Resources is to sort of curate all the best resources. And I came across you, even though we only connected a few months ago, I came across you actually as we were going through our rebranding process about three and a half years ago at the church, I came across your website and uh, some really great valuable stuff uh, I've learned from you. And so I just appreciate uh, what you do for the big church, the big C church. And, uh, and if, if you're watching or listening, I, I, I want you to know from, from what I know about Michael, he's the same person on camera as he is off camera. And I appreciate how he leads his family so well. And you should, you should ask him about his, uh, family brand script, which is incredible. Um, anyway, Michael, I just appreciate your kindness and friendship. You've been very generous with your time and, uh, appreciate this podcast and all the resources you provide. So thank you. I wanted to say that before I forgot. So thank you. I appreciate it. Man, thanks. I appreciate that. Thank you. So, um, you know, we, we went through a brand, a rebrand about, about, like I said, three, three, four years ago. And, um, uh, we started really to solve a problem. And the problem was we, we were, seeing some growth and we had a lot of ministries and a lot of activities um, but we also had a lot of names for those ministries and a lot of logos and a lot of looks and uh, a lack of consistency and it was getting harder and harder to communicate those all of the things going on and so we we knew that it was it was time for us to to go through a rebranding process to simplify things to clarify things um, and also to just to get some consistency, you know, across our, our church ministries. Yeah, that's great. So that's one of the big things that I found that branding, just taking a branding approach, um, like when a church goes through that process, uh, it just helps to create this unity. It, it takes everything that we're already doing and just communicates it in a, in a way that's very simple and very, very clear. Right. So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, for a church, uh, if you're, you know, a communications director or a pastor of a church, if you just need that clarity, maybe it's time for you to consider going through the branding process. It's not just about a logo. It's more than that. It helps you to really get clarity about who you are. In, mm -hmm. in, your, own, in your words, Josh, Joshua, what, what is the reason why a church should consider branding? You know, uh, branding has a, a lot of potential, a lot of upside. I think um, the biggest reason, if you haven't yet, um, well, here's the deal. You have a brand, whether you know it or not. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, it's just whether or not it's clear. And that's what going through a brand process, a brand scripting, getting setting up brand guidelines, that's ultimately what that does is it provides clarity. And clarity wins. So for us at Bethany... As an example, we had, had, you know, several ministries and most of the ministries had these very clever names, you know, like Avail. Okay. If Michael, if I tell you Avail, what ministry do you think that is? Ooh, yeah. I love this game. Uh, I would think women's ministry. <laughs> okay. No, wrong. It oh. was, it was a student ministry. I, and <laughs> here's the thing. It was like a, like three youth pastors ago and nobody knew exactly why it was called that or where it came from. Uh, and so another a funny story. So our, our mission, we have three missions teams that are basically local missions, national missions, and, and global missions or international missions. Well, our local missions team was called Frontline. And <laughs> I was talking to one of the guys who actually helped to write our brand guidelines and he said, I thought Frontline was like a ministry to Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> so even he was confused on what, it, so that was part of, you know, we just had all these names for things. And so I was inspired in part by, uh, through your resources, as well as uh, Gateway, they recent, they did a, a rebrand about five years ago, and I came across their 
uh, their their why Gateway Church in in Dallas, based out of Dallas, and and they 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 were very similar. Of course, they were huge ministry, and they had hundreds of logos and ministry names, and they changed everything to be Gateway, and then what it is. And so that's what we did. We changed everything to be so instead of a veil, it's Bethany students. You know, instead of uh, frontline, it's Bethany missions or Bethany local missions. You know, it, it's uh, it, so that whole process just provided so much clarity uh, for us. And 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 here's a tip: if you're listening or watching, and you you wonder like, is this clear enough? Ask ask yourself: Do I have to explain it after I say it? And if you have to explain it, then it's not clear enough. Like you need to simplify it even more. You shouldn't have to say, uh, you say what it is and then say, well, that's our student ministry. No, just say it's our student ministry, right? <laughs> uh, so I first heard this, I first heard this concept at actually at a conference at Church on the Move uh, that's here in town in Tulsa. And uh, they, they had recently remodeled their lobby and they had this big uh, area in the, in the lobby that was um, like where you could go to sign up for things, to purchase merchandise, to get connected with a group. And they, they called it the source. And it was a, they highlighted it because they painted the outside of it, a re big red wall. It was painted. And so on, from the stage, they would say it, it was, it was clever because they would say, go to the source. You know, if you want to sign up for a group, go to the source. And, but they kept finding themselves clarifying from the stage when they would say go to the source they would say it's the big red room in the lobby or the big red wall in the lobby and so it just occur occurred to them why are we even wasting that or trying to confuse people with calling it a clever name and so now they just call it the red room <laughs> you can't miss it they say if you want to sign up for a group or you want to get involved in a mission trip or you want to purchase merchandise go to the red room and and if you've ever been to their campus, you can't miss it. It's a huge red wall. And uh, so th that's, that's really the thing about branding that helps with branding. One of the things is that uh, clarity is always beats cleverness. Like I think as churches, we try to be clever with acronyms. Don't use acronyms. <laughs> just call it what it is and, and just, just strive for clarity. That should be your your first goal, especially as it relates to if you're going to go through a rebranding process. I remember going to a church for the first time and uh, they were trying to communicate uh, several different things. And the amount of insider words that was used was um, amazing. Uh, and we don't think about that. If you haven't been to a new church in, in a while, mm -hmm. you forget what it's like to go in and, and experience that. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you have any family in, in, the, in, in the military, but they do that all the time. Like if they're speaking with each other and they're in the military, they use acronyms and all these different words. And you're like, I have no clue what you're talking about right now. <laughs> yeah. You know, that was a big part of why we uh, rebranded was, was for what we were communicating to our guests. And we, we want those who are our guests on campus, you know, it's the first time they've ever visited us or maybe the, the first time they've ever seen us online or seen, you know, a, a signage or something like that. We, we are trying to simplify and provide consistency so that a guest, no matter what their experience is, is with our church and even beyond that, no matter whether they've been to any church at all, we want them to be able to understand exactly what we're talking about without having to use extra words to explain it. Uh, so that that is a, I'm glad you brought that up because how your guest perceives that, like, I actually heard it said one time, I thought this was so helpful, is the only thing that should be offensive to your guests in your church is that they're a sinner and they need Jesus. Everything else should be so clear and so easy to understand that they're not trying to spend a lot of mental energy trying to figure out well, what does that acronym mean and who is so-and-so and you know what is that, how does that apply to me? So uh, the br branding just helps to clarify all of that, especially for your guests to make it as clear as possible. And, and uh, so they know exactly what you're talking about without you having to spend extra time explaining it. Yeah. You know, one of the things I found is that uh, churches, if we're not careful, we, we become like a, like a club. It's for the insiders, mm -hmm. you know, and if you're on the inside, you understand, but if you're not on the inside, you don't understand. 
but yeah. healthy churches are churches that are welcoming to people from the outside yeah. where people from the outside our walls feel like they can come and be along and be a part of what what's going on very quickly and the most successful churches that are you know really making a difference are the churches that are very conscious about that and um, branding is just a tool. It's it's like a microphone that we use to amplify, you know, our voice. Mm-hmm. Branding is just a tool we're using to amplify our message that hey, mm-hmm. you belong here. You're you're welcomed here. This is a place where you can find purpose and a place where you can make a difference. You know, it's it's all those things that we know a church is. But how do we clarify that and think about how to say that in a way that people from the outside feel welcomed? So Joshua, how did you get your um, your your leadership on board? with some of these ideas. So that's, uh, that's interesting. I'm glad you asked that question. We, so I kind of, like I said, I came across gateway stuff and I had seen some of your stuff and seen a few other resources here and there and knew that it was time for us to make a change. So as you know, communications director, quote unquote, communications (laughs) director, um, you know, I'm responsible to, you know, write copy and send out emails. And, and so I'm trying to communicate in the clearest and and most succinct way possible. And I'm finding it frustrating to have to, you know, explain what these are, explain what these ministries are and that sort of thing. And so I just um, created a keynote presentation to our staff and uh, blocked out some time and said, this is, you know, I need 30 minutes of, you know, your focus time. I have, I have something I want to present to you guys. And uh, so I just walk through the problem. Uh, I mean, it's like you, like any sales, <laughs> you, you, you start with the problem, right? I walk through what the problem was and how, what, this, what I thought the solution was is in rebranding and then how it was going to make, make us better as a church, both in how we communicate, how we're presented to our community uh, and, and also ease of use for, uh, you know, now we have, fewer decisions to make, which we can get into that if you want to. But um, so I just walked them through that. And our, I can I can remember to this day, I mean, this was probably om- nearly five years ago since we had that initial meeting. And I can remember my, our senior pastor said, Joshua, I don't like it. I love it. <laughs> and so that was like, that was it. That was enough to say, okay, we're moving forward. And so we, you know, then we went on a seven or eight month journey of, you know, going through everything and updating everything. You know, we had, we had one main logo, but we, when I started looking at it, we actually had five logos because it was, it was a, you know, a little tweak here, a little tweak there. And it was actually ended up being five different logos. And so, you know, we went through everything from signage to social media, to, you know, website, to um, uh, everything on, on our, on our buildings, all that stuff we went through and and got clarity around all those and it like i said it was a six seven month process before we could say okay we're done with this project for now you know now we can just just work within these parameters so to speak so i love that you uh unpack how long it took because it is a process uh we're not just talking about a logo uh a lot of times when somebody thinks branding you think oh it's a logo but it's more than that um i also love the fact that you are part of the church staff. Um, and then you were able to initiate this mm-hmm. successfully. Like you were able to make your case and be like, Hey, this is what we need to do. Um, and you said, you talked about the problem and actually just, just real quick, would, would you, um, I, I think you said something about you were able to simplify some things through that process. Can you unpack that? Yeah. So a, a big part of it was the names you know, like all the ministry names. I So in the presentation, I just listed all the ministry names that I could think of that we currently offered. And then beside it said this, instead of calling it Avail or Frontline or, you know, Engage, you know, whatever, all these random vague names that nobody knows what they mean. We, what if we just call it Bethany Students? What if we just call it Bethany Missions? What if we call it Bethany Women? You know, that that sort of thing. So I, I went through those specifically. Uh, I showed, um, you know, how we can make our logo consistent across all of our platforms and make that, that look and feel uh, better. And then, so for me as the communications director, and I didn't actually realize this going into it, but going through the brand process, 
has saved me so much time when I'm creating graphics or doing social media posts or even in the, kind of the copy because we have all that outlined. We know what font to use. You know, we know what colors to use. And so instead of me where I would spend two hours trying to make this really cool graphic, you know, which, you know, it, maybe it was cool, maybe it wasn't, but it didn't really, it, there was no consistency across the board. So now, instead of it taking me two hours to make this graphic, I know what font I'm going to use. I know what colors I'm going to use. I know what the look, I know what the style is going to be. And so now I can do it in 30 minutes instead of two hours. And so I've, I've saved myself so much time just because we, we went through that process of simplifying, clarifying, and, uh, and, and making things a, a lot more clear on how we're, how, what our look is, what our style is, and how we're going to use these, these elements. Oh, that's a great bright byproduct that, that came out of that. So that's, yeah. and I've seen that over and over again, as I work with different churches, um, that's exactly what happens. You create a standard. Once you have a standard in place, right. now you're just being very consistent over a long period of time, which builds trust. And so right. people will learn to trust. They learn to trust you. Um, and the byproduct is that it, it's quicker. It's a little easier. You kind of know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Can you touch on your website? What did you do with your website? So our church website? Yes. So uh, we actually, re I rebuilt the website because uh, it was in much needed, uh, <laughs> needed a lot of repair. So we just rebuilt the site and, uh, and went through, uh, which I'm, I know you're familiar with this, but uh, the story brand process to yes. think through the story brand framework and try to... Um, think of our website in view of this is my first time experiencing your church and try to answer, you know, questions that guests, first time guests would be asking. And we try to do that, you know, um, as clear and as uh, consistently as possible. So of course we added logo, but we, we solidified color and font and made it all consistent across the board. And then just tried to think what are what questions are first time people, first time guests asking, and then try to answer those questions on the website. Um, yeah, so that, that was kind of the website process. Yeah, so the website serves as the front door. It's one of the, you know, your logo is what people see the most. Uh, we need to make sure that that's good and on point with who we are. Uh, but the website is it's the front door. It's like where people go to when, whenever you're like, uh, you know, if you invite your coworker to come to church with you, one of the first things they're gonna do is pull out their phone and look up your church. And then from there, they'll decide, I don't know, I guess maybe I'll come or maybe I won't. So let me ask you this. What do you think? I kind of thought through this, you know, I, I agree. I know what you're saying. Websites are front door. I think the website in some ways is now where people are driving by your church. That's what your website is. And, and that's what your Facebook page does as well. I think the new front door is your online, your church online experience. Ooh. That's my, that's my opinion because ultimately you want people yeah. to, you don't want them to stay online. Hopefully you want them to come in person and to experience community uh, with you. And so your, your website is kind of like when they're driving by and then, and then if you can get them to go to, go to, to watch an online service, that's like now they're in the front door and then if you can get them to come to your service, okay, now they're, they're inside the building and they're experiencing the life of your church. What do you think about that? Man, I love it. You're adding more, uh, more terms to my analogy here. Uh, I like <laughs> that. Um, maybe there's the front porch and then there's like the, right. the front door and then there's right. the foyer. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no, I think you're right though. There's, there's, a, there's a validity to that. Now, now that, you know, pre or post COVID, right, right. we're still kind of in it really. Um, Online, the online experience is so important and so critical. And I do, uh, man, I really like what you said. I, I feel like the, the in-person experience is still like, it's the secret sauce, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, of what a great church is. I think that'll stay the same. I, I don't know. We can't predict the future, but just from my own personal experience, like being able to see somebody eye to eye, shake their hands, go hang out, you know, those right. type of things. I think that's the secret sauce of a church. Mm -hmm. So what if the online experience, like you said, does become this front door where you invite people to come in further. I love mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And so me as a worship pastor, the, the big thing that you just cannot get 
when you're at home watching online is how the Holy Spirit moves among the people while you're worshiping together. You just can't replicate that. So, so that's, that's one of my, you know, I'm, I'm a worship pastor first. So that's, that's what I, I love to help facilitate those experiences where people can experience God's presence that way. I love your perspective. This is so good. Um, so again, Joshua is on staff. He's leading from that position on staff uh, through helping his the church leadership and even like people within the church get on board with this branding process. Um, he's getting buy-in and seeing some you know some results happening from that. Um, so I love that because for you guys, you might be in the same position where you're on staff. And you're trying to go through this process, and how do you do that? How do you convince leadership that hey, we do need some fresh uh, design elements for our church so that your job becomes you know easier. Uh, you could be more effective in what you're trying to do. And I think what I heard Josh Joshua say was that, you know, he was presenting this in service to the church leadership. Mm -hmm. Like the, we want to reach more people. We want to reach, um, you know, uh, more lives that can be transformed. So this is a tool that we can use, you know, as we go through this process of branding uh, that to help us help us to do that. Um, so Joshua, you one more thing about that, just, yeah. just so that people understand. So I've been at Bethany 10 years now. Yeah. So if you're, if you're watching this and like, this is your first year at a church and you present this huge plan to rebrand your, to your, to your pastor, it may or may not go as smoothly as possible. Like it took me some years to build up uh, sort of collaterals for, for them to trust me. Like I, I established my own brand, so to speak, you know, so, so that when I came to them and presented the, to this, to them, I had already been on staff for five years at the time. And they knew that, first of all, I was going to do my homework and I knew what I was talking about and that I was going to present a good product, you know, cause I had, I had, I'd had the history of presenting good product for five years. And then when I presented it to them, that's why in that one meeting, our, my pastor said, I don't like it. I love it because I had built that trust up to this point. So I just wanted to make sure that that you understand that's, that's a big part of it. Yeah. Thanks, Joshua. I appreciate you taking some time on that one. Uh, for sure. There's a lot of people in that same boat. Uh, so tell us a little bit about uh, worship uh, resource church and what you're doing there. Worship resources church. Yeah. So most churches struggle to find quality resources that they can use from week to week. In fact, most churches don't even have a budget for things like sermon graphics and social media graphics and videos and uh, motion backgrounds and things like that. And so worship resources church is, you can think of it sort of like a, a central hub uh, that where we direct you to um, the best resources there are from hundreds of different companies and organizations we comb through all of the resources and find the best ones and then link to those, which will save you time. And, I, and also the one, uh, there's a ton of free resources. I would encourage you to check those out first. Uh, but even the paid resources that we link to, uh, we kind of give you the pros and cons of each and the pricing for each. So you can make a quick decision on what's best for your, your church. And so ultimately we, we help direct you to and help you to learn how to use quality resources to make your church better. And that's wow. it. What's your that's, resources about church? What a great tool. I wish I had that like 10 years ago. Wow. <laughs> I remember doing all that research on my own. So, wow. Yeah. That's why Joshua is awesome. Yeah. How can people get hold of you if they wanted to? So uh, you can follow all, us on all of the social media channels. Uh, but if you want to email me directly, just send an email, joshua at worshipresources.church. Joshua at worshipresources.church. And did you have a resource you wanted to point people to? Yeah. So um, the, our branding guidelines are, are um, sort of the, our end product of this whole process that we went through. I'd be happy to give it to you guys, to, to only to your listeners, Michael, <laughs> um, but I'm happy, happy to give it to you. So just go to worshipresources.church slash brand. Uh, you won't be able to find that link anywhere. So you just have to type it in worshipresources.church slash brand. And then you can download our brand guide and, and use it sort of as a template, or at least you can use it to compare. And that's one of the things that I did. I, I asked a few churches for their brand guidelines so I could compare and see what works for us. And 
what kind of elements we can use. So you, you're welcome to use ours, uh, change the name uh, and, and make, it, make it your own, uh, but you can get that at worshipresources.church slash brand. I love it. Thank you for serving the, the big C church, you know, helping to, uh, to, to get better just as a whole. So any final thoughts before we close things out? Oh. <laughs> Let's try that again. Any final thoughts before you close things out? No, I don't think so. I think uh, we're good. I appreciate uh, you. I appreciate your friendship and uh, uh, pray God's blessings on your ministries. And again, if I can serve you guys in any way, uh, just let me know. Awesome. Hey, Josh, Joshua, I keep on saying Josh, but it's Joshua Riggs. Uh, so Joshua, hey, thank you so much for um, all the value you provided. Also, just for encouraging me to keep keep doing what I'm doing. I really do appreciate that. Yeah, man. Thanks again for being on the podcast. Yeah, happy to. My hope is that this podcast is a help to you. There are three ways you can support this podcast. One is to subscribe. Second is to share it so other people can be helped by it. And the third way is to leave a review.